lotus flower which uh, I've got one here that I've already made up uh, I'm going to do a slightly different centre with the uh, this one I'm going to uh, do a fuller centre and I've just dropped some bits off which is like that so I'm going to show you how to do with that but try not to break any bits off like I've done there just move that out of the way now the cutters that I'm using here um, I actually got these uh, from online uh, from Aliexpress I try to buy everything in this country but uh, this was something that I came across on there when I was looking for something else the only problem with that is it takes forever for them to come but it did come with uh, the vena for the flowers and it came with uh, a vena for doing the leaf which is optional Oops, which is this one here uh, but the leaf I found putting it together is a bit big I've got one here that I've made up uh, but I'm not going to bother with that today uh, I'm just going to make this layer here so the colour I'm doing this time is I'm doing a yellow one I'm only going to make two pe petals like I usually do for the simple reason that you don't want to sit and watch me making loads and loads of petals otherwise we'll be here for hours it does take hours to make them I know but uh, I'm just going to do one of each of the petals I've already got uh, a lot of petals already made up and dried ready to uh, ready to put them together so I'm going to cut this wire into three this is a 26 gauge wire which is generally for most petals unless you're doing something really big is plenty big enough for uh, what we're doing so again some white fat on your board I've got some colour on there so I'll just get rid of that first as I've said before the easiest way to clean your board is to rub some white fat on your board and then give it a wipe over that gets rid of all your colour that you've got on there because when you're dusting you can't see where it goes so I've got some yellow paste there I've used melon for this from uh, Sugar Flare now you can roll this paste a little bit thicker because the petals on lotus flowers or water lilies as we know them over here um, it, they are a bit more fleshy like uh, orchid petals and lily petals as you've seen me do the the lilies before plus the fact it's quite it's quite a deep veining in there so you don't want your paste too thin otherwise it tears so I'm going to use my trusty little rolling pin but you can use the other side of the cell board the groove board or whichever make you use and I believe there are other makes on the market now but they were the original ones so you want a good groove down the center if you haven't got any equipment you can use the old uh, sleeping policeman method where you roll it out from either side but you do need a small uh, rolling pin for doing that uh, one of the uh, small cell pins and uh, I'm going to cut out one of each of these petals a wide one and a narrow one take your paste away move those out of the way if anybody ever hasn't used cell pins before this is the one I use a lot it does come in a set you can buy them uh, in a set with a smaller one with it which is like a cocktail stick I prefer to buy them in a set because it's cheaper to buy it that way like most things if you buy singly then it's always going to cost you more to buy them so again into the bottom of your paste like that twist it in and then just feel it go up through your paste 
if it comes out just pull it back and go back in again same with this one try and get your wire as far up your petals as you can or your leaves or whatever else you're doing when you're using this method for the simple reason that if it breaks it's a lot easier to repair if you haven't got a spare right so that's those two done onto my pad if your paste is quite thick and you find it easier to roll ball like this using this method <coughs> which it is sometimes when you're doing thicker paste rather than just pulling it round like we normally do when we go round the edge like that so if you just roll it round we use this method when we're using cold porcelain if anybody's worked with cold porcelain you'll know what I mean you can't drag your uh, dog bone tool or anything like that round it because it doesn't work with porcelain so you've thinned your edges just pop them to one side cover the paste up I'm not going to use any more of that just get that other one out while I'm in there and into your vena make sure you've got the bottom part the right way around bend your petal before you go into these because it's quite a deep cup in there so if you bend your wire before you put it in there's less chance of it coming through your paste then top of your vena on and it cups it and veins it and everything for you so then that wants to go onto your bubble foam and then this, do the same thing with the making sure that your ridge here is going down into the bottom part that you are putting into there that's the back part of the petal give it a good press and there we are there's your next petal so onto your bubble foam, ready to dry. Now then the stamens for the centre, uh, I've used this cutter here, it comes in a set <coughs> for making carnations and things like that. Uh, these are from um, FMM. And I used that one for doing the uh, stamens. I did try making some stamens with cotton, but it didn't quite work. I do quite make quite anything that's got a lot of stamens in, I do usually making them with cotton and if you want to colour it you need to make sure you get all the proper cotton not the polyester mix because uh, the polyester mix if you're colouring it won't take the colour so you need all different colours to do that whereas if you're doing using proper cotton which I did actually find on uh, eBay if you look you can find it um, it does take up liquid colour and that so uh, you're okay with that right so I'm going to cut out two of these now if it sticks in your mould it does come with a little thing to put your uh, cutters together and it also is used for pushing out the petals but because I've got fat on my board it's stuck to the board pretty well so I'm using my Dresden tool to take out the excess paste from there like that excuse me if I stop for a minute because like I said I haven't got a, a camera person so I have to stop and, stop and check my uh, monitor to see if <laughs> you can see what I'm doing because I do have a habit of going out of shot with as you'll know with some of my other videos I'm still perfecting that to make sure that I keep in shot because the problem is if I move my camera for you to be able to see what I'm doing like when I'm putting things together it stops and starts again so you end up having to a separate video that's why there's so many parts in some of them because this camera that I've got only films for just under 30 minutes right get rid of that paste back into my And then you need to get these off your boards. So if you've got a small it's 
just get you make sure your petals are all out. There we are. Onto there like that. And then all you need to do with these is you don't thin the edge, you start from the edge and just come inwards with each of your petals. It will stretch your petals a little bit and it will also curl them there, sticking on the pad a bit there. Just get that petal round there. That's it. This is one of the reasons why you don't want too much fat on your board as well because sometimes they do stick to your mat when you don't want them to. And with these I do want them to curl up so they're going in the right direction. Doesn't matter that not, some of them are stretched a little bit more. Nobody's going to check on that. So, uh, I mean, if you ask anybody about any of these flowers, they, they won't know about all the little details and things like that. But you do learn an awful lot about flowers and the different parts when you're doing sugar craft. So it's really it's a cross between floristry or kind of nature and sugar craft. Right, so once I've done those, just put a bit of glue on there, on one of them, and then I'm going to lift that onto there to try and get your petals in between your other petals, like that, which you would do if you were doing a a can um, a chrysanthemum or a gerbera or anything like that and I'm just going to pop that to one side now while I make the uh, centre it doesn't matter about that stiffen up a little bit at this point because you do want it to dry and you want it to have a natural shape so to make the centre part which is this part in the centre here that bit there you need a 20 gauge wire because everything is going to be attached to this so I've got one here I'm just going to cut a bit off of that mind you though it doesn't really matter does it? I'm going to put a hook on the end of this small ball of paste don't go too big because otherwise your stamens won't go around it so it wants to be round about a Malteser size put your wire through that into the centre like that bring your paste over the top of your wire then what I do with this is I put it upside down on my board and press it down so you've got a flat top and just work around the wire. Make sure that that's pinched in as well at the up, right up to your wire so that your wire stays put in one place. I'm going to have to be careful with this because when I put the stamens on here it's still going to be soft. Normally I would let that dry and then put the um, stamens on. So if you take that off there you've got your flat part of your pod and then what I'm going to do then is I'm going to go into it like that so you've got little dimples in it okay just pop that to one side for a minute then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make some really tiny balls and they need to be tiny to these. So, tiny ball of paste, like that. And I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I've got 10 dimples in there, so I want 10 balls of paste. 2, 3, Oh, 
Oh, make that one look a bit small, that's a bit bigger than the others. If they're too big, just pinch a little bit off and make it a bit smaller. When I took some of my students to uh, the uh, sugar craft show when it came to Manchester, uh, we were watching somebody from the guild and <laughs> they, knew, they found out that I was the teacher and they were the students and they were always saying, oh, whenever he tells us to roll anything small, they're never small enough. And she said, "Well, if he tells you, if she tell, if he tells you really small, do it small, then cut it in half. Then you're probably somewhere near where you need to be. So it's a good lesson to learn." There we are. Ten balls of paste. Now, what you need to do, and you need to do all this while this is still soft. So, pop the ball of paste on the dimple that you've made then get yourself a pin or whatever else you're using brush handle or whatever you've got to hand and then just go into the centre of that that's not sticking so if you find that they're not sticking then just go in with a little bit of glue the first one that I did I didn't have to do that with but the uh, second one that I did, the centre that I'm going to use for this, I had this problem with that so never mind. Like I keep saying to everybody it doesn't make, it make any difference how long you've been doing it things still go wrong for all of us. So into your hole, in with your centre Sorry, I'm going off camera again, aren't I? I'm just going to cut a bit off the wire because I can't hold it. The wire's a bit too long to hold on the... Cut half of that off. It's better. Up to there. In with the cell pin. You could say, why don't you just put them all on and then go around with your cell pin? Well, I tried that and uh, they all rolled off. So then you've got to go looking for them then. Pick to her. I can't see the other, so I'm just going to put one in the centre there. Not quite as neat as the other one that I did, but there we are. That gives you a general idea. So basically what you're looking for is that sort of effect that I've got in the centre. Now what I would normally do is to let this dry and then dust this with uh, the green. I've used um, Ginkgo from uh, Edible Art but because uh, I've already got this ready to put on I'm going to uh, put this straight on so this is only, I'm not going to use it. So we'll go into the centre of the uh, stamens like that bring those up underneath your pod and then just let them fall into place like that and then you need to leave it upside down to dry because otherwise if you put it the other way which is going to fall off so there we are so I'm going to bend that over and put that into my dry form Right, so I'm going to stop here and I'm going to come back now and I'm going to show you how to colour the petals and uh, put the lotus flower together. So, see you in a moment. 